Hello, and welcome to the shed. In today's video, I wanted to do an update to my previous video on small workshop storage, where I was telling you the way I stored my tools within this sort of three meter gap here and this like meter and a half gap this way. Now, I've recently changed that storage and some of you have been watching my videos since the start, you would notice that I used to have a big tool cabinet up here and that is now gone. So, what I wanted to do is bring you in here, talk you through the changes I've made and why I've made them, and then it'll allow you to decide whether you want a wall-mounted tool cabinet or maybe a toolbox or something like that, or just have your tools up on the wall like I have now, and maybe that'll help make the decision for you, maybe save your materials if you don't need a wall-mounted tool cabinet. So, I'm going to bring you in here and we'll get started. So, first up I wanted to talk why I got rid of the tool cabinet that was here. Well, one, I originally built the tool cabinet as I believed that it was the way, based off other videos that I'd seen and resources and books that I'd read, that it was a good way to keep the dust off your tools to help prevent them rusting. Now, whether that is a tool cabinet, like I've done previous videos, and I'll leave a link to a couple of ones that I've made down below if you're interested in just a portable tool chest. And I tried to work out of one of them initially, and it just it didn't work for me. My workflow was all off. And I didn't have a nice spot to keep my tool chest in this area and be able to work through with my workflow. So I opted for the wall mounted tool cabinet, which had the big opening doors. And I'll just flick up a quick footage of what it looked like so you can see it. I found in this space that the doors came out past this cabinet, so I always had to leave the doors open. I also found that those doors got in the way when I kept them closed, so I did leave them open. And because I was in and out quite a bit, I didn't tend to close the cabinet. And I found that even with the door shut on the cabinet, which I did at first, it still didn't stop the dust piling up in there because it was always open when I was working with it, obviously, and the dust still got inside the cabinet. Now, for those of you that know, dust sitting on your tools tracks the moisture and that's what causes rust, particularly on cast iron bits like the sides of your hand planes. And obviously for those of you with power tools, you would experience the same thing. What I decided to do was get rid of the tool cabinet because it kept piling up the dust and I was still getting the rusting on my tools. Now, obviously I have a bit of rust on my tools up here at the moment. I haven't actually got around to cleaning some of them since I removed the tool cabinet. Some of these hand planes haven't been restored either. But the ones that have are not rusting any more now in the open than they did in the closed tool cabinet. So that's one big plus. If you don't have to pay for a tool cabinet or build a tool cabinet, you're saving on a lot of materials. And if you've got the wall space like I do here, even in quite a small space, you can get a lot of tools up on the wall. So first of all, I just wanted to let you know, I didn't waste the tool cabinet. I just repurposed it for what I needed. Now, if we look close up here, what I did is I repurposed one of my front opening doors for my tool cabinet up here for my hand planes. And I've just cobbled together a way of holding them with a thin strip up here, a thin strip down the bottom, and obviously these holders here. And then I've got my other hand planes just sitting in here with a bit of shock cord so they don't fall off. And this works well. I've been able to fit the router plane up here and also my rebate plane over here. That's pretty good use of that. And then my large hand planes obviously didn't fit in there, so I've got them up the top here out of the way. I don't use them often, so that's not so much of an issue. I've also gained, obviously, this wall space here behind my cabinet. And instead of having all my marking and squares and all of that inside a cabinet, I've got them up on the wall here where they're nice and quick and easy to access, including my marking knives. And it's all just within quick reach and easy to use and put back. Now I want to direct your attention down the bottom here and I'm not sure that this is going to be my final piece, but I wanted to keep the drawers that I've made on my cabinet. So what I did is I had a shelf that ran in through here and I chopped it off at that shelf level. It gives me a little storage area here to keep some extra bits and my drawers are still functioning until I decide whether I'm going to build something different here or something purposely for this. I'm working to see how it goes before I change that. I'll direct you over here. And this is the main body of my tool cabinet. Now what I did here is, I turned it upside down, so this used to be the top. 
And as it's got dovetails, and I cut that shelf off where I had just a raveted shelf, what I did is whacked a couple of screws in to hold the shelf in place here, turned it upside down so the strength of anything that's held in this cabinet here is down against those dovetails resisting this bottom board pulling off. So obviously I've still got my files and rasps and stuff there hanging up over here as they did before. And then one last addition of putting the main case of the tool chest over here was ending up with a shelf here. Now I did have a little one before but it wasn't very wide and it didn't work very, work very well. So what I was able to do is pull my wooden uh, levels out and sit them up here so I've got quick access to them and I'm able to use them easier than pulling them out of that ground cabinet. And I'm also able to store straight edge up here or I just hang the straight edge sometimes just over behind you if I'm not using it a lot. Then obviously the hammers and stuff that stays the same and I also gained this bottom shelf just here which allows me to store some stuff up off the bench which allows me to have more space under here on this table and then it just allows a little more storage for items to keep them up out of the way such as sharpening stones that I'm not using and, and the like of that. The only changes I've really made is that the Tormek sits over here and now that I've got my finalized sharpening board here that kind of sits here. I've got everything kind of piled up here at the moment on top of that board but when I go to use it I just move them out of the way and I'm good to go pull the board across with whatever sharpening stones I want to use with it and it's not too much weight having just one set of stones if that's what I'm using it for. So this is just a good way where you can recycle parts that you've got if you no longer require them and use them for different purposes and I was able to make it fit in over here which I wasn't sure was going to happen, but I made it work. I had to make a few adjustments to the back wall to get it to fit, but it did fit. And lastly, the last piece of that tool cabinet, we're going to swing back around over here. So the last part is the last door of my tool cabinet here. So I've actually made really good use of every part of the tool cabinet, and I've used this and repurposed it to hold my transitional plane, my wooden hand planes, and my radius plane. And we can see that I've put a little lip here. These have just got some little strips holding them there. Little bit of um, leather just on the inside of this strip here, which is holding the back of these in. And they're friction held, but then the shock cord is just in case it gets smacked and knocked since this is a shed. This wall is also a little bit loose, so it's just a little bit of reassurance that none of this is gonna fall off. In making these changes, you can see that I've mounted everything on the wall. Now, by doing this, I was able to complete what I call my sort of vintage tall wall, my green woodworking tall wall, that sort of thing. And I've been able to get it all up on the wall here, along with my braces under here, which was packed away in a box before. So by making these changes, I've been able to get more tools up on the wall so they're accessible. They're not stuck in boxes where it's difficult to use them if they're regularly used. Now, partially this is because I'm doing YouTube. I like to show these tools off. But there's no need in having these particular ones in a box. They're quick, ready access, and good to go. Similarly, I've got a few extra bits over here, and I was able to get my long crosscut saws and also my little ads. So now I just want to turn around and I want to show you the changes that I've made to my hand saw storage. For those of you that are regular viewers of mine, you would have noticed that originally I had a hand saw rack here where all of the hand saws set up vertically like that and it worked fairly well, but it was limited and it encro encroached on this space, which made it harder for me to use this bench over here for my sharpening setup and been able to get in here. I've now got a lot more space for standing here to use that bench there. So what I've done is I remove that. I've sat my tenon saws up flat on the wall here. I have my little gentleman saw here. I've had the addition of these two Japanese saws here as well. And I'll be doing some reviews on them when I get to it. I just want to use them for a bit before I go ahead and do that. Then my saw sets, my coping saws, and then finally, where most of my saws that were up in that rack are down here, my full hand saws in, in rip and cross cut. And if we just take a look down here at the hand saws, you can see 
these are just sitting on a dowel. I've got the ones in the front, which are the ones I use the most. And if you need to remove them, you just remove the one you want, grab the one, put them back. And they're all sitting here, relatively flat and out of the way, tucked in, protected by here, by my little ground cabinet. And it's just a nice little area there. And it also allows me access into this little nook here where there's a lot of screws and odds and ends and other equipment. Moving on from there, one of the next changes I made is this section here, which you would have seen before had my wooden hand planes on. Now, I found that I didn't use those wooden hand planes enough. So I moved them obviously over there, which I already showed you. So I freed this up for my set of Finchens chisels here that have apricot handles as it happens and a new set of Japanese chisels that I got here along with a hammer for these Japanese chisels and obviously right in the center here you can see that I've got a wooden brace I do like to use it it doesn't work quite as well as the metal ones so the metal ones tend to take preference but I do like to use it and keep it out on display then we're gonna look up to this little shelf that was here before and some of the additional stuff that I've got stored up here. Some bits I forgot to cover in the first video as well. So let's have a close look up here and I'll talk through what's, what we've put up here. But at first glance, you'll see that I've got my 45, another wooden hand plane, my longer hand planes up here, uh, my first dovetail joints that I've done. I like to keep them uh, if I want to pull them out to show somebody or just for my own per personal preference. I have my blades up here for my 45 and a couple of uh, horsehair brushes and a ruler. The stuff that was on this shelf that was running through here, that stuff ended up up here. So it's now up out of the way, nice and safe. And I recommend that if you're doing storage, particularly in a small uh, workshop, get that verticality, get some shelves. You're going to get some good storage up out of head height and it's a good way to put if you've got more room than me, you can get a deeper shelf and get some bulky items up high, up out of the way of your day-to-day -day workings. And so you don't have to have them down on workspace that you can use for sharpening stations, wood, you know, any of the good stuff. So that's an important one. And I really recommend getting that verticality if you can. And one more change that I made is over in this corner here. I have my Miller's Fall egg beater drill over in here, which is this one just here with its handle stuck on a magnet that was the door latch on my cabinet. And also my chest brace uh, drills as well. Now, I don't use them all the time, but they're very nice to have when you need them or when the battery fails on your drill and you forgot to charge your other battery or if the power goes out, you can still use them. So they're a really great addition to have. And now I've got them stored in a nice area where I can grab them if I need them. And it doesn't affect my workflow because I don't use them a lot. And that's the major changes here. So I'm making the changes to fit my hand saws down here. I've had to slide this ground cabinet that way. So it's pushed right up against this back wall here. So I have lost a little bit of storage where I had my wooden screw clamps and my F clamps. Now, currently I haven't found a good solution to really store those. So what I've done is down here, and you might recognize this tool chest from my video, of the dovetail tool chest. What I've done, I've got some spare hand planes down here. I've got my second set of chisels that sits in this tool chest. So I'll use them in the field if I need them. I've got a lot more of my uh, bits here for my brace. They sit loose because I haven't actually come up with a good solution, so they work well here. And my wooden clamps sit here, uh, so if I need them, I just quickly move the paper towel and the plastic containers and I can grab them out of there. So the other changes, I've got my F clamps just sitting down here in the space. I don't use them a lot, but they're quick access to get if I need them and obviously not on the wall right within my working space. Maybe not the most ideal, but there's concessions you've got to make in a small workshop. So that's one of them. They're over here, still quick access. And up here is my lathe. Uh, I didn't mention that last time because it wasn't really within my work area, but I have the lathe here and 
I will talk about that later on and introduce you to the lathe and what it can do for you in a primarily hand tool woodworking shop. So that pretty much rounds up my changes that I made. One big advantage when I was choosing where I was going to put things is that at the bench I want to be able to turn around and grab things like my marking gauges and stuff, get to the bench and then when I'm done with it I can turn around and put it back so it doesn't pile up on the bench. So that's one thing you've got to bear in mind is where things are and how it works for you when you're grabbing them all within one or two steps of your workbench just speeds up the workflow and makes them easier to work with. So I'd like to ask you, how do you store your tools in your workshop? And do you use a tool cabinet and find it works for you? What works, what doesn't work for you? Let me know in the descriptions below. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe down here. It really does help the channel out. And if you'd like to support me a little bit further, please consider checking me out on Patreon. That's www.patreon.com forward slash Aussie Woodshed. Links in the description below. And if you like this video and you'd like to see some more videos related to tool storage or maybe my tool chest that I built down here, I'll leave those videos up here for you right now. Bye for now.